slit lamp examination biomicroscopy slit lamp also known as biomicroscope is a product of optical engineering and electronic technology its wide magnification range variable illumination system and unlimited angle of view make it indispensable for viewing ocular tissues and performing diagnostic and treatment procedures including corneal evaluation crystalline lens observation gonioscopy tonometry laser procedure fundoscopy and contact lens evaluation this video will demonstrate how to use a slit lamp and perform different techniques. All slit lamps in the market have similar design. They have two basic components, an observation system and an illuminating system. The illumination system provides a precise and adjustable source of light. These are controls for varying the width of the beam. or height of the beam or even change the orientation of the beam for example from vertical to horizontal the illumination system also provides a variety of filters for example diffuser red free filter and UV filter to observe specific ocular health conditions. The illumination system can be rotated to allow different angles of illumination for different examination technique. The observation system is divided into two parts. First, a microscope consists of eyepieces Second, a magnification changer. The microscope, together with different magnifications, provides best view of stereoscopic images. The observation system and illuminating system rotate about a common axis as a single unit or move independently to create different angle between illumination and observation system that allows different examination technique possible. The observation system and illuminating system are also joined on a movable platform with a joystick controls vertical, forward, backward and right-left adjustment. Attached to the top of the headrest is a fixation rod to guide the eye gaze position. Nowadays, modern slit lamp also allows for ocular photography and video photography. Before using the slit lamp, you need to adjust the focus of the eyepiece. Insert the focusing rod into the hole at the common axis of rotation. Then narrow the illumination to make a slit of similar width as the rod and adjust to the view to the lowest magnification. Now turn the eyepieces fully counterclockwise while viewing the illuminated focusing rod, slowly turning the eyepiece with the graticule clockwise until it reaches sharp focus. Next, view through the other eyepiece. Repeat the same step and note the setting of both eyepiece for future use. Finally, adjust the interpapillary distance of the eyepieces for binocularity and stereopsis. In preparation for patient examination, make sure they are seated comfortably. After seating the patient, adjust the table to a comfortable working height. 
Position the patient against the chin and forehead rests. And adjust the instrument of the index mark and the chin rest set assembly aligns the outer canthus. Before starting the examination, set the rheostat to its lowest level before turning on the power. Slit lamp examination technique can be divided into three categories according to the type of illumination. First type is diffuse illumination formed by using a wide slit beam. First, set the light source and microscope separated by 45 to 60 degrees. Then set the light source as a wide slit beam and to the lowest intensity. Begin with low magnification. If any unusual condition observed, gradually increase the magnification for more detailed examination. Diffuse illumination provides an overall view of external and anterior segment of the eye. For example, cornea, conjunctiva, sclera, eyelid, eyelash, and tear film. It is also useful for examining the lower and upper palpable conjunctiva. However, to prevent tear film from becoming unstable, Eyelid eversion is better performed at the end of anterior segment examination. It is also commonly used for contact lens fit assessment, for example, centration, movement and coverage. The second type is direct illumination. The light source and observation focus coincide on the same spot on the eye regardless of the position of either system. Direct illumination can be subdivided into the following techniques. Parallel e-piped. This examination technique requires narrowing the wide slit beam to about one to two millimeters. It is useful for a general survey of the cornea layer. For example, epilithium, stroma, endolithium, as well as viewing scars, abrasions, and corneal nerves. To perform this technique, Maintain the angle between light source and microscope at about 45 to 60 degrees. Change the diffuse illumination to a parallel e-piped by narrowing the slit lamp beam to about 1 to 2 millimeters. Magnification is generally begins from low to medium. Optic section. A parallel e piped can be transformed to an optic section by narrowing the slit width to a thin slit. Magnification should be set at medium to high in order to provide the best view of the cornea. Gradually increase the light source from low, medium to high. This illumination is generally used to view a cross-section of the cornea. An optic section helps to differentiate the various layers of the cornea, including the epilithium, the stroma, and the endothelium. Specular reflection. First, set the angle between the light source and the observation system at a point that the reflection path of the light source overlaps with the observation path. Adjust the slit width to about 2 mm, similar to parallel e piped. Set light source at maximum and magnification is set initially on low. A bright specular reflex should appear on one ocular eyepiece. Zoom to the highest magnification. A bright image can be seen with a dull image adjacent to it. Adjust the joystick slightly to focus the dull image to bring the endothelium in focus. Specular reflection is primarily used for viewing the endothelium. Its structure looks like a mosaic pattern. Conical beam. First set the angle between the light source and the observation system at about 45 degrees. The light source intensive is set on high. Dim the room light, magnification set to high. 
adjust the light source aperture size to the smallest one or reduce the height of a parallel e-piped until it becomes a small spot. The two reflections are from the cornea and the iris. Begin by focusing the beam on the cornea. Move the joystick forward to focus on the iris. Then move the joystick back half that distance to the midpoint of the anterior chamber. This is the area to view for cells and flares. A conical beam is used to detect the presence of cells and flare in the anterior chamber. There are no clinical signs are present in this health eye. Indirect illumination. The third type is indirect illumination. The light source and observation focus do not coincide on the same spot. This can be done by rotating the mirror of the light source out of the click position. It is useful for viewing semi-transparent structure against an illuminated background or the surface characteristics in the area adjacent to the light beam, whereas these details are washed out by the intensity of the light beam itself. Retro-illumination Retro-illumination makes use of the light reflection from the iris or retina as the secondary source of illumination to examine eye structure in front of it. For example, the cornea. It is called direct retroillumination if the viewing location is illuminated by the secondary light source and called indirect retroillumination if the viewing location is next to it. Sclerotic scatter. This examination technique makes use of the internal reflection of the light inside the cornea to observe any opaque or semi-transparent conditions such as corneal abrasion, edema, scars and vacuoles. First, focus on the cornea and set the magnification to low. Position the light source at about 45 to 60 degrees. Adjust the light source to about 2 mm wide and rotate it out of the click stop position to illuminate at the limbus area. A halo of light is observed around the entire limbus as the light is transmitted throughout the cornea. The normal cornea appears dark since the light is being internally reflected. All techniques can be interchanged from time to time or even performed at the same time during the examination. It is not required to complete one technique before you move on to another technique.